Hey guys, it's Danny. Alrighty, today we're gonna answer some questions about semi-hydroponics. Let's continue the series. I actually filmed this together with yesterday's video, but the video was too long. It's a whole different subject. So I'll separate today the questions you left on my previous video, plus one that you left on yesterday's video. And I'll try to answer the most important questions you guys left me. Another comment was complaining about mold formation. And well, I have to say that you need to be careful with mold in the sense that you need to be sure it's mold and not efflorescence. Let's get the efflorescence issue out of the way. We will discuss more about it in Friday's video when I will discuss about fertilization. Efflorescence means the formation of salts on top of your medium. And you might be tempted to freak out when you see them. However, though, efflorescence is not a bad thing at all. It's actually pretty wonderful, but I will debate more on Friday's video. Efflorescence can indeed be bad if you don't know what it is and how to control it or why it forms and you start to put all sorts of um, substances to eliminate the mold, the so-called mold. So be sure it's not efflorescence. I'll link you down below to a <laughs> video I made. It's not with the leka, it's with the pots, the clay pots. Clay pots have efflorescence as well and people were freaking out that I have mold on my pots and I did a little experiment. It's the same thing. You can check the video down below. Uh, for the demonstration of efflorescence. Anyway, make sure that you do have mold indeed. Mold will be more fibrous. Now, if you do indeed have mold, then it's not a semi-hydroponic culture issue. It is an orchid issue. You need to check the root system. Mold, usually or generally the one that we have in our growing spaces is the type that forms on decaying matter. So you have some decaying matter in the pot. So try to remove a little bit the leka on the surface, see a little bit what's underneath. You might have some dead roots there. In case you do, I would suggest that you unpot the orchid. If you have good roots with leka attached, don't mind them, don't touch them, they're okay. Just look for the dead roots, eliminate the dead roots, wash a little bit the leka, you don't need to treat it with anything because if the source of food is gone, the mold will be gone as well. Repot it and that's that. Generally, you can see none of my orchids have mold and I do have high humidity and lower temperatures right now. I have a fluorescence, I don't have mold. It's very rare that mold can occur on semi-hydroponics unless you have a source of decaying matter inside. So do check for that. Another question referred to algae issues. As you can see at the top, I have zero algae and I have zero algae on all of my pots actually. Inside the pot, being that I'm using opaque pots, the colony of algae is greatly at bay. It kind of depends on the pot. I have some pots which are slightly, slightly transparent. You cannot really see on camera, but this one is just a little translucid. In these types of pots, yes, I have a little bit of algae formation um, somewhere around this level, which is invisible because the pot is a bit opaque. If I were to repot the circuit, I would see a little bit of algae, but it's not excessive. The opaque pots indeed maintain the algae at bay, which is something that I prefer. Normally, semi-hydroponics is used with transparent pots. I am just the type of person which considers anything excessive can become dangerous, so I'm trying to maintain the algae population as low as possible. A bit of algae never hurt an orchid, and usually it doesn't hurt anything. I just don't want it to get excessive, and that's just what I believe. But yeah, with the opaque pots, I absolutely solved the issue. As you can see at the top, I don't have any type of algae. Another question was in regards to the nobilis or dendrobians which need a winter rest. And well, it's easy, I just don't water them and that is that. I did not experience loss of roots or anything of the sort, so the leka doesn't seem to be drying. I know I had issues with ceramis, but ceramis is a whole different thing. It's very porous, leka doesn't appear to be that bad. Of course, if you will have a very sensitive rooted orchid, you might have issues even with leka because it's porous. But for the main part, and at least with the dendrobium nobilis, I didn't see anything, I didn't experiment any desiccation, and pretty much with the orchids that do need a drying out, simple. I just didn't water and everything worked okay. And I'm not sure if you can see, but my nobilis do have buds. They received what they were supposed to receive, so I'm guessing everything went pretty okay. A few more important questions that I received. If the reservoir doesn't dry out within five to six days, do we need to empty it? And the answer is no. I personally don't empty it, although in my environment it doesn't stay all that wet. But depending on the orchid, if I have a very big pot, sometimes it can be more than five days. No, I just pour water over it, I don't empty it. There is no point to empty it because when you pour water, everything that was here would just be jetted outside. That's the whole point of watering in the way that I showed you last time. 
pretty much you will do a flush all of the time. If you don't want to do that type of watering, well, I have a video down below with how I water and what I need to do. It works as well. I just don't flush every time I water. I flush once a month or so, in winter even less. To answer to your second question about accumulating nutrients, no. And we will discuss more about this in Friday's video with fertilizing. You see the efflorescence? It means something. It means salts and nutrients shall never ever be inside the pot. More explanations on that in a different video, but yes, no. The good thing about semi-hydro is that you will not have buildups inside the pot pretty much ever. And that's something that I think I kind of saw the effects of in the ceramics setup. Do you remember? We um, soaked our kids and we discovered we did actually not have salt buildup. Although the ceramics was porous, well, it has to do with the efflorescence. So no, don't worry. Theoretically, in the reservoir, you will never have buildup. And your last question has to do with watering coming out from the holes. Yes, the watering that I do is not a flush. You have two ways of watering semi-hydro my way which you will discover in the video in the description and the normal way which implies adding as much water as to flush the pot to fill it up and then let it flush and that's it I'm kind of getting away without the flush but I cannot say you should do like me I think you should do whatever Ray says first and then when you're comfortable and you kind of know the details of your setup you can start to play and another question that I get a lot, if it's worth putting a layer of sphagnum moss on top or combining the setup with organic uh, materials. You can obviously do it, you can do pretty much whatever you want. You'll just have to be okay with the consequences. So I would personally never try to put organics in the setup because they will decompose. My whole point with the setup is to not have decomposing materials, not have to repot. Even if I would put sphagnum moss on top only and then when it degrades, just remove it you'll always have bits of sphagnum moss inside the medium that will start to decompose and might pose some problems. So yes, obviously you can do whatever combination you feel works better for you as long as you know what to expect. And with organics, you can only expect decomposition after a while. So make sure you will repot and you will take that into account before you decide to do what you want to do. An interesting question that was left on yesterday's video was about the oxygen levels in the reservoir. Somebody asked me if roots will not suffocate in that reservoir since the oxygen there is considerably less than all of the other layers. And yes, it is less, but it's not as little as you might think. Now, Leca is a porous material. And you might already know whenever you submerge a porous material in water, it will retain air in its pores, which slowly will dissolve in water. It's the same thing with the reservoir. As the leka dries out, and when I mean dry out, I don't mean bone dry, it can be moist, but when the level of water decreases and disappears, the air pockets in between the leka and its pores get filled with oxygen, with air. When we fill up the reservoir, that air gets trapped. And then, over the course of a few days, the oxygen gets dissolved in water and gets picked up by the root system. Being that the reservoir doesn't really stay full all of the time or for necessarily too many days, the roots will not sit underwater for too many days either. And when they are underwater, they are very oxygenated actually. Because you don't only have one piece of leka here, you have a lot of leka retaining that oxygen in between them and in their pores. One of the principles of hydroponics is actually offering oxygenated water. And if you do a little research in agriculture or other implementations of hydroponic, you will see that people use a reservoir, a big one for that matter, because everything is done on a large scale, and either air stones, either a fertilizer which contains already dissolved oxygen. Oxygen is very important for the roots. Without it, roots cannot pick up nutrients. And at some point, if they become waterlocked, they cannot even pick up water. How's that for a paradox? I'll link it down below to the role of oxygen. It's something I talked about before, but with semi-hydroponics, we cannot talk about root suffocation through lack of oxygen, just because the reservoir goes up and down, up and down, oxygenating the water in the reservoir pretty much constantly. 
Okay guys, that's about it for today. Tomorrow uh, we will do the short videos, which by the way, I need to rename. <laughs> if you have suggestions for our short series, yeah, just let me know in the comments down below. I do have some ideas as well. But anyway, we'll come back with a regular in the weekend, which will deal with fertilizing. But for the next two days, we're gonna take a little break from semi-hydro. I hope this was useful for you. If you'd like me to clarify other details about semi-hydro, just leave me a comment down below and we'll make a video. So thank you guys so much for watching. You know the drill if you've enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up if you hated it give it a thumbs down subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos and don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss a video and that's it i'll see you all next time bye so do you guys remember the paphiopetalum that i received from max and it was a no id paphiopetalum well look at him look at the bud i can tell that it's not going to be a green one like the modier green it might be a modier, but it might be the other version, um, which has a little bit of red, a little bit of brown. It looks very, very pretty. And given that Max said these came from a flower shop, I think it is one of those commercial modiers, but not the green ones. And I'm just so happy because I've always wanted to find that one and I never did. So I am extremely excited to see this bud opening up and of course, film it.